I'm Elle and I'm the Managing Director of Space Co New Zealand. We help people create their communities in local spaces. And um, what you're about to see is a recording of the presentation that I gave at Green Pavlova 2022. So the subject of today's presentation is how can we fill the gaps in provisioning for local facilities, which is something I know is a hot topic across councils and RSTs. So I'm going to tell you three stories today, one about a near miss swimming adventure, one about a hockey game that was not to be, and lastly, a story of how this all relates to strategic network facilities planning. So there'll be adventure, there'll be mystery, and there'll be high octane analysis of council strategy. And by the end, you should have tangible ideas for how to increase provisioning in your area, examples and inspiration from those already leading the charge, and a good idea of who space to co are and why we do what we do. So let's get into it. So first of all, um, I'm just going to tell you a quick story to um, illustrate what we're going to be talking about today. So about uh, six years ago, I did a road trip around New Zealand before we moved here with my husband. And uh, each night we would uh, have, uh, he would he would fish and I would go for a swim. And we were at Okarito Lagoon. It was a beautiful night. This is a picture from the night. Uh, and the sun was setting and the water was like molten gold. It was beautiful. So I went out for my swim and about within about 15 minutes, I had gone quite far from the shore. And I thought, okay, I better turn back. And at this point, the sun had set and the water was pitch black <laughs> and I started swimming back and realized that the tide was against me and that it was going to take me a lot longer to get back. And I struggled and struggled and struggled and finally about 45, 50 minutes later, made it back to shore uh, and was very relieved. But the next day, uh, we went on a kayaking trip along the lagoon and we were doing the briefing with the tour operator and they said, one thing you need to be really careful of in a lagoon is you need to follow this very, very strict route and there are markers along, along the lagoon that you need to follow. And I said, oh, why is that? And they said, well, the lagoon never really gets any more than three feet deep. So this is the deepest part of the lagoon that you need to follow on the kayak or it'll get, it'll get wedged in the sand. And that's when I realized that if at any point during my a treacherous swim the night before I had put my feet down I would have been able to walk out of the lagoon but I couldn't see the bottom I, it was invisible to me I didn't know that it was there um, so uh, this this story is basically to illustrate that um, what becomes possible when you make the hidden visible so that brings us on to the topic of, you know, there are not enough facilities in our local towns uh, and, 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 and districts. And for some areas, this is genuinely true. Like, for example, we know that Gisborne is an area that is completely lacking certain types of facilities. However, in many areas, there are facilities. It's just that they're not visible or accessible enough. So not every town or rural location can have a multi-million dollar sports complex, but they may have a school or a sports club that can provide some opportunities for accessing local recreational spaces. So our big idea for how to solve this is not a new idea. It's the way humans have brought supply and demand together for millennia. It's a marketplace. So from the Agora public markets in ancient Greece to trade me or book a batch, marketplaces help people with something to be shared, be found by people that are looking. They make the hidden visible. So in the context of local community facilities, a marketplace can instantly increase provisioning of facilities just by making what is already exists more visible and accessible. So we can increase provisioning. Uh, by just using what already exists around us. So let's look at how we work with councils to make this work in real life. So space co helps councils create a local marketplace of facilities. So instead of a static list that just has uh, phone numbers or uh, static forms, we enable an easy, familiar marketplace experience that's much more like a kind of Airbnb way to find local spaces. Um, and our first example is the city of Quinana, which is a semi-rural township in Western Australia. They have heaps of indoor and outdoor recreational spaces, but it wasn't obvious that they could be booked and used outside of seasonal hire activities. They were hidden in plain sight. 
We partnered with them in 2021 and they have since enabled over 75 facilities to be easily found and booked online. Not only that, but other non-council spaces can be found and booked too. And here's what that looks like in real life. So this is um, the City of Quinana's, uh, this is just a, a regional search on our marketplace for City of Quinana. You can see that customers can sort by price or filter out by the amenities that they need. And it's a really, really great way for people to explore what's available to them in their local area. So what you're seeing here is that there's not just the council facilities, but there's also local facilities like Zone Quinana, there are um, kindy spaces, there's a wellness space. So already we've increased the provisioning just by making all these other local, you know, either charitable spaces, school spaces, private spaces, sports club spaces available. And you can also see the huge range of facilities. So it's indoor, outdoor, pricing's very clear, minimum booking times are clear, and they've even got a community bus that's available for hire. So, and this comes on to another part of uh, what becomes possible when you make the hidden visible is that you don't just have to spare share bookable spaces. You can spe share, share heaps of things. So we work with um, the town team movement to make free community spaces available, volleyball courts, beach wheelchairs, and it keeps it, it keeps surprising as what councils use our system for to share. So we've got things like free trailers, uh, zero waste food, um, zero waste events kits, um, food truck locations, market stalls, storage space, just so, so much uh, that can be shared. And wh wherever there's a um, something that people don't know about, it can be easily shared and booked. So another more local example is the work we've been doing with Mata Mata Piaco. And they've been working with us for three months and are already seeing an increase in casual sport bookings, which is exactly the outcome we wanted. So we're making it easier to get local facilities used so that people get active and together more. Um, and here's some real life examples of how much easier it is to book recreational sport facilities. So these are real bookings that have come through in the last couple of weeks. But the other thing that we help make more visible is data, because that is another thing that's hard to come by in the recreational facility space. A lot becomes possible when you can see what's happening at facilities by making the data visible and, prog uh, and progress measurable and tangible. So you can see here in this example, the light blue color shows, and given what we're in sort of mid-May, we've already seen this increase in casual bookings, which is great. And that's um, you know insights that council can take back uh, and prove that the investment is, is paying off. And here's more examples of other data that we collect. So you can see how revenue and bookings trend across the year whether you're increasing the activation of your venues, you can see which venues are doing well and which ones need more support. Um, we've had councils that realize that they can, should completely change their marketing budget and resources towards the lower use spaces when this data was made obvious. You can see who the most active groups are in a space and what they're using it for, what the cancellation reasons are and how much COVID has affected revenue. Um, you can also really dive into who the local users are, where they are based, how far they are traveling, uh, and what their total booking value is. So you can see here clearly that there's um, a couple of, uh, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a dummy data, but um, in a real uh, life example, you could easily see who's actually making up the higher bulk of percentage of revenue for a particular space. We also crunch some data for some of the community led venues that we work with across Auckland to try and understand some booking reason trends. So what we see is that uh, in 2122, uh, the highest number of bookings were for things like counseling, support and therapy, dance and performance at arts and kids or holiday programs, um, which is interesting that these are the um, areas that seem to be growing the most uh, in terms of the, what people want to use space for. However, we see for, um, for bookings that are, uh, uh, when we look at the revenue from bookings, so this is about volume of bookings, this is about revenue, we can see that there is a, um, a much higher proportion of revenue coming from the lower frequency but higher revenue events like weddings and social occasions. This also means that we can um, 
see some new booking trends uh, across the, the spaces we work with. So we see more uh, churches looking to share spaces with sports clubs because they don't want to pay a lease on a building, but they do want to use it for several hours a week to meet as a church, and that can save them a lot of money. We're actually seeing a lot more people doing community co-working where they don't necessarily want to commute into the city, but they do want to work somewhere away from home locally. We see many more spaces sharing their spaces like forecourts and car parks for food trucks and markets and bringing the community together in that way. In New Zealand, we've seen a trend for Kainga Aura to get much more involved in the community space uh, arena and providing free um, development as part of uh, their, uh, their developments. So if I just skip back to where we were uh, and head back, what we can see is that we've been able to make what is hidden uh, visible, and this can have a massive uh, impact on increasing provisioning to local, um, to local communities. So we're gonna dive into part two, which is making what is difficult easy. So this is a quick uh, anecdote about a friend who tried to book a social hockey, hockey match. So she plays hockey socially and they wanted to find a regular slot to practice in. So she reached out to a local rec center to inquire about availability and pricing. What happens is a blow, uh, what follows is a blow by blow account of what happened in real life when she tried to book. And this may make painful viewing. So here we can see that it was eight emails and she was still no further with actually booking the space because the availability wasn't clear, the pricing wasn't clear, the process wasn't clear. So it should not take more time to book the court than to play the game. And this is happening, imagine how many times this is, this is happening across all our facilities. This manual process is happening thousands of times a day across council and non-council facilities and it stops people doing things. And so this is a theme that we will explore in part two. What becomes possible when you make the difficult easier? So here's just one small example of the problems with current booking processes. So if we look specifically at council facilities, typically they're only available to deal with the bookings between nine and five. However, most bookings come in or want, uh, most people want to actually book the time outside of their working hours. So if you've ever tried to book a, a, a local facility like a hall for your kid's birthday party or a reserve for a family picnic, you'll be familiar with how difficult it can be to do something that should be quite simple. Um, there are heaps of paper forms, data needs to be copied into several systems, card numbers get copied down incorrectly, bonds get taken, and then they take weeks to go back. There are credit notes and refunds, multi-departmental conversations, back and forth questions about availability, fees and charges. The list goes on. And this is not just councils, this is for community-led spaces like rugby clubs and footy clubs that are operating their sports club as a venue, but the team are volunteers. So they have to do this in their spare time. They're not even paid to do this admin. So we have to fix the processes as well as the visibility because it's we can't get those extra facilities like schools and sports clubs to put their hand up and become a venue for hire if it's too difficult for them to manage those bookings. Um, so here's an example of where we work with one of those local community-led facilities um, to make what's currently what was difficult for them to do very much easier. So this is the case story of Onipoto Domain Hall. It's a council-owned property that has Auckland Aussie Football Rules Club as its anchor tenant on a peppercorn lease. The hall is used for regular fixtures and training by the club, but outside of that, there's plenty of opportunity to hire it out to the community and raise extra revenue for the club. However, the club manager, Jared, was reaching the end of his tether. The hall was popular for kids' birthday parties, and he was having to spend hours each weekend getting back to inquiries and creating invoices. With a new baby on the way, he just didn't have the time to manage it. So now I'll play you um, Jared's story just for a couple of minutes. You can hear from him how, uh, how he's been using the system. Oh, it looks like the sound is not playing. I will share this alongside this uh, presentation so that you can see this afterwards. Apologies for the lack of sound on that one. Um, but here is an example of uh, the uh, the hall bookings that come through. So these are all the hall bookings that he now manages through space to go. But can you imagine 
if for every single one of these bookings he was having to go back and say yes it's available no it's not available create an invoice take payment send a receipt do all the all the communications whereas all he has to do on the space to co system is accept the booking with one click that's it everything else is done so we've made it easy as possible for him to share the space he can apply a bond that's automatically uh, gets returned if no claims are required the regular hires invoice monthly based on actual usage so there are no errors and at the end of the month he gets a lump sum of all the revenue collected from space hire with a reconciliation report so that accounting is easy as well so we've literally bought, um, taken what used to take hours and, and distilled it down to a couple of minutes so that the space can get more usage and this can have great benefits to the community as well. So firstly, um, he can easily predict the revenue coming in and understand how much his bookings are growing. And you can see there has been a growth in bookings, particularly those casual bookings in the last year. And we can also see that this means, so, so what that growth in bookings means is more opportunities for connection, recreation and sports that are being made available to the community that were not there before. And here's an example of a new class that has started up at that space, um, which is a karate class, which means that people living in that area now have, um, you know, three or four sessions a week where they can take their kids to karate. That's a sporting activity that wasn't there before because that hall is available for hire by someone that wants to teach karate in that area. We also get some, uh, I saw this booking come in last week, which I wasn't quite sure was whether it was serious. Uh, but again, they can take bonds just in case. Um, and so this is what the data we capture on the time savings of using a much more automated platform like ours to manage bookings and the time savings that this can create for, for sports facilities. So um, the impact of this is that we can basically redirect people's time to activities that create opportunities for local communities rather than cost time on repetitive admin and processes. Um, we also have another example of Ketera Nui, which is a dance rehearsal facility in Onahunga, where they've been able to spend their time and use their data to get funding on the lease for a new theatre. So this has created a new performance space in that area. Um, I won't show that video as well because I suspect that the uh, audio will be the same. Um, but my last example is Kangaora, which is the New Zealand housing, um, uh, state housing department. And where there is, uh, they have started doing free spaces for the community who, that are impacted by the development uh, of, of building new housing. Um, so they, uh, their, their, house, their, their spaces are free. And we've been working to make underutilized spaces in the CBD available. And it's absolutely wonderful to see how the community are responding and using these spaces. So this is just an example of all the things that we've seen pop up in these spaces. Um, you know, for example, we've got people to people needing a safe space for online therapy sessions, uh, doing dance workshops, setting up new community groups. This is incredible for that local community to have this space to use for free. Um, and of course, uh, it's been made possible by the fact that the people managing the space have literally almost nothing to do to accept it, the bookings. So uh, that brings us on to our last um, part three, which is making the plan happen. So uh, this is where we're going to talk about strategic network facility plans. And almost every council has a documented plan for how they will manage their network of local facilities from halls, centres, multi-sports multi arenas to reserves and even campgrounds. And I've read a lot of these plans and they all have these themes in common. So there are gaps in provisioning for certain types of facilities. There is often negative community feedback on the difficulty of finding and booking, booking spaces. The cost of managing this portfolio of properties is high and getting worse as these assets age. Therefore, there is a desire to devolve management of these assets to community operators. However, the capability and compliance of those community-led arrangements can be mixed. And this basically leads to a tug of war between council and community-led venues, where council expect a level of service to be delivered, but they don't necessarily provide the resources to enable that. And there are very limited you know, funding opportunities and almost no technology in this space to support. They expect accurate data and reporting, so to understand utilization and who's using the spaces, but there is a complete lack of technology and training. So if a space is managing bookings in a paper calendar, 
they will have to spend hours providing those stats back to council, which is you know a huge time drain um, for something that could be automated with the right technology. And there's always a struggle between the desire to hand over to community-led operators can, is often for monetary reasons, but it's also because they have much better grassroots connections and can do much more nuanced programming and activation in that local area. However, there's still a desire for that space, that venue, to be part of a wider council agen agenda. So this is where we come in. So we, um, we're right at the centre of council, community groups, and then community-led spaces so that we can manage and, and, and stop that tug of war and make it much easier to facilitate between all of those parties who ultimately all kind of want the same things. You know, we all want to have community connection and sustainable spaces. So when you think about sharing space differently, um, you can, there's, there's a lot that can be gained from it. So because what we do is not just a council booking system, it's an ecosystem of local spaces, it means that you have a universal online booking platform. So whether your space is council managed or community led, it can still have the same really good booking experience for customers and you get the consistency of data and compliance. You're saving everyone time because you're using a tool that is automating so much of the repetitive admin. And you have this agility that you can stretch and grow your network through making um, those spaces that are hidden at the moment much more visible to communities. And this quote is, um, is brilliant because it just shows that this is what people are expecting. People expect to be able to quickly book and pay for something online. They don't want to come to council and fill out a paper form and have their bank details taken, wait six weeks for a bond to come back. They just want to book that basketball court on a Sunday so they can go and play with their family. Um, and zooming out further, we just see this bigger net benefit that we call the rising tide lifts all ships effect which is that the trend we see across the councils we work with is that the more you make available to communities, the more they get used. And it really is a network effect. And this can have tangible benefits for economic development and post-COVID recovery too. So going back to that example of the new karate group using Onopoto in Auckland, you know, Jared has made it easier for the local hall to be found and booked. And so the karate teacher uh, makes a regular booking at the hall and that means that he's, you know, that's a, a new business, a new revenue stream for him. Local families who've been wanting to try martial arts for ages now have a local option that is feasible and is walkable from their house. And that means that the, that family gets to go to that class. They get to walk to the venue. That's more exercise. The parents might grab a coffee at the local cafe while waiting for the class to finish. Parents will meet new parents and build those local connections. And the kids that attend the class will grow more confidence through learning that new skill and also widen their social network. And just the list of benefits goes on and on and on. So what we aim to be is a space sharing platform that will grow as an ecosystem that will organically create an abundance of community spaces. This will meet the objectives and aspirations of many strategic plans as opposed to the standard booking system, which only really deals with those transactional um, journeys that are between uh, you know community and council managed venues not thinking about the bigger picture of all the other facilities that could be made available so lastly you know let's make this change happen for our communities I believe that helping make it easier for people to find and book local affordable spaces is a silver bullet to create so many positive measurable and tangible outcomes for our local communities if we make facilities more visible so that people can access more spaces local. And if we make it easier for these bookings to be facilitated, then we really can help plug the gaps in provisioning and create so many more opportunities for people to do stuff together locally. And um, hopefully you can tell from this presentation that this is something that I'm so passionate about because I started Space to Co New Zealand so I could solve my own problem. I had so many ideas for things I wanted to do, but finding the space was too hard and too time consuming. And so I, over the past three years, we've built Space to Co and I've worked directly with so many community venues in partnership with councils to build a solution that is specifically solving this problem. That's why when um, venues like Jared see what we've built, they're like, it's as if it was designed specifically for community venues. Everything else is more of a shoehorning. Um, and this is, you know, this is something that we're continually co-creating with the people that we're trying to solve the problem for. 
Um, so I come back to, you know, the problem of plugging gaps in facilities is solvable. We have the facilities and we have the data that shows that when you make them more available, literally we do get, you know, these incredible outcomes for communities. So um, just wrapping up. So if there's one thing I'd like you to take from this presentation, it's hope. If I can make this change happen and the case studies I mentioned can create this change, then you can too. If you work with sports, recreational community facilities and you recognise the challenges I talked about today, then um, get in touch and have a chat. We also have heaps of free resources, videos and training to help community venues. So please check these out as well. Thank you very much for listening.